So let's model a little test part in Fusion so we get to learn the program a bit more. I'm going to model a little wooden object that I've used in my technical drawing exercises. You can see my instructions on technical drawing exercises in the links down below. You can also see a scan of the drawing I'm working from. So if you want to try it out from the drawing that I'm using to use the same dimensions, you can do that as well. When you open up Fusion 360, it always starts with an untitled blank design. A good habit to get into is to automatically save your design. So we can go ahead and click Save. It's going to ask us a few questions. So it's going to ask us a name. So I'm going to call this Modeling Exercise. And I have it in the location Modeling Exercise. So you can always choose where you want to save it. So it's a good idea to make a new project and put it in that project. And once you save it, you'll see at the top here, it says version zero. That's because this is the first version of it. We'll talk more about versions in Fusion later. So now if I hover my mouse, notice that it clicks on these different origin planes. So what we need to do is pick one of these planes and create a sketch. I'm gonna click the create sketch. It's up here in the top left and I'm gonna click the bottom plane. Notice that now Fusion is in the top view and all of our menu options have changed. So now we have new sketch tools and constraints tools that we can use. So up here we have rectangles and the default one is a two point rectangle. And what I'm gonna do is click on create and then I'm gonna click on rectangle and then I'm gonna get a center rectangle. And I'm gonna click on the origin. And I'm just gonna drag out and then click. Now, if you see here, our sketch is blue lines. That means it's not constrained. We'll talk about what constraints mean as we move forward, but we need to give it some dimensions. But before we even do that, the way that this particular part is laid out, and again, you can refer to the drawing links below, is that it has two sections. So what I wanna do is draw that section first before I start dimensioning things. So I'm gonna go ahead and get a line. I click on the line tool and intentionally, I'm going to draw this just wrong so we can learn about constraints. So you see here, I have this line and it wants me to draw another line. So I can either press escape or click on this check mark. If I click on the select tool, I can move these pieces of the line around. That's not doing anything. So what I would need to do is constrain it. And we have many different constraints and one of them is coincident. If I click the coincident constraint, then I can click on this point and this line, and now forever, those are locked together. Now I can still move it up and down the line, but they're coincident. Now I can click on this one and this one, and now they are coincident. But look, the line is all goofy. That's because it decided that it was gonna keep the length of the line. Now what we wanna do is click the perpendicular constraint. So now I can click this line and this line, and now you can see this perpendicular symbol. They will always be perpendicular. So what's great now is I can start to dimension this. The best way to do that is just press D on your keyboard and you'll get the dimensioning. You can also come up here to the menu and click on sketch dimensions. I want to dimension from this point to this point. So I'm going to click here, then here and drag my mouse up and then click again. And right now I'm in inches. So I'm just going to press enter and I'm going to come up to my document settings and I'm going to change my units. and I want them to be millimeters, and I'm gonna press OK. Now I can double click on this dimension and edit it. So I'm gonna type 34.3 millimeters, because that's the dimension from the sketch. And now I wanna dimension this side. So I'm gonna click from this line, to this line, and come up. And I'm gonna type 42.3. Next, I wanted to mention how wide it is. So I'm gonna do 37.3. And again, all these dimensions are from the actual object that I measured and made a drawing of. So there's only one other thing that we need to do. We need to add a circle to this. There's a bunch of different ways we can do this. In Fusion, there's always more than one way. In this particular case, I'm going to draw a circle. And I believe it's 7.2 for uh, the radius. Actually, it is 14.4, it already is a radius. So now I have this circle, but if you look, it can be moved around in all different places, right? 
So how are we going to place this circle? So what we can do is we can draw a construction line. So if I get this line and I click on the midpoint, you see how it snaps to the midpoint? And I draw a line. If you look at that line, it's a black line. But if I click on it and then over on the right, I click construction, it becomes a dotted line. So let's go ahead and put a coincident constraint on this. So now we have that. You can see that this is locked on there. Now that we have the point coincident, let's go ahead and dimension how far it is. So if we press D or grab our sketch dimensions, we can click the center point, then this line. And when we come up, the dialog box is open. Now watch what I can do. I can click this dimension and it says D2. Then I can just press a slash two. So that means it's gonna be dimension number two divided by two. And then it's gonna be right in the middle here. Fusion has driven parameters. So we'll talk more about that when we talk about user parameters. But notice this FX here, that means this dimension is being driven by this, it's doing the math. And if I change this to 75, that's gonna automatically update. I'm gonna press Command or Control Z to go back. So now we have all the things in our sketch. And if you notice, everything on the sketch is black. And if I twirl out my sketches, I have this red padlock. It's important to fully constrain your sketches. So I'm gonna click Finish Sketch. And if you look, I just have this flat sketch. So the next thing we can do is we can extrude the different pieces. The extrude icon is up at the top here and you can also press E. So I'll click extrude. And I'm gonna click this face right here. And I'm going to pull it up. And according to my drawing, this is supposed to be 37.4. And now everything else disappeared. Uh oh. That's okay, if you look over in our browser, we can click on the eyeball and now we can see our sketch again. So what I'm going to do is click E and I'm going to extrude this up 15.9. And notice since I didn't select the hole, it's not selected, so that's really great. So now we have the little block that we made. And we can consider this basically done. I'm going to hide the sketch. And before we stop, I'm just gonna show you one more feature of Fusion. We can add what are called fillets to our object that make it a little bit smoother so it's not so rough. We can click the fillet command up here on the top left. It's the F command and we can highlight everything. So now we've picked all the edges. We're just gonna go in and instead of moving this, this is kind of hard to control. We're gonna type one millimeter. And so now you notice that everything is just rounded off on the edges. Then we're going to highlight everything and we'll right click and we'll click appearance. Once we have our appearance menu open, we can click on wood and we can just pick just a piece of pine so we can just drag this on there. And now it has the appearance of wood. We can go ahead and close this menu. And then we're gonna rotate like this. And the last thing we're gonna do is click on the render menu. And you can see here now we have this piece of wood and we will go ahead and click render and it's going to have our render settings so you can change these settings and we're going to do a local render let's just do a standard render and then we can save it as a png click render and then once it's complete you'll have uh, a render right down here, and then you can download and save that file and use it for whatever you want. So now you've made a part in Fusion 360 from a drawing, you've applied appearances to it, and made a rendering of it. We're gonna cover many more complex ways to model different things as we move forward. And then I can look at the rendering gallery, and it's right here, and if I download that file, it'll allow me to save it. I'm gonna save it on my desktop. And if I look at this rendering file, you can see there is a nice render of the little wooden block that I made. Experiment with other materials as you make your renders.